Have you ever stared up at the stars and wondered how did life begin? Where did we come from? It's one of humanity's oldest questions. A mystery that's captivated scientists, philosophers, and explorers alike. The origins of life have inspired countless theories, experiments, and even works of art and philosophy. Today, we'll journey back billions of years to explore the theories and scientific discoveries about how life might have started on Earth. We'll look at how simple molecules could have combined to create the building blocks of life, how these molecules might have evolved into more complex structures, and even consider the idea that life could have come from space. So sit back, relax, and let's embark on a journey through the ancient, mysterious beginnings of life itself. Chapter 1. Earth's Primordial Environment To understand how life began, we need to look at what Earth was like billions of years ago. Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago, but in those early days, it was nothing like the calm, blue planet we see today. Imagine a world that's hot, fiery, and constantly bombarded by meteorites from space. Volcanoes were erupting, releasing lava and gases into a thick, hazy atmosphere. The air was filled with gases like ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide, nothing like the oxygen-rich air we breathe today. Over millions of years, Earth began to cool. The water vapor in the atmosphere condensed, and heavy rains began to fall. These rains continued for thousands of years, eventually forming vast, ancient oceans. Some scientists call this period the primordial soup era because they believe the oceans were full of essential ingredients for life. But what were those ingredients? And how did they come together to create life? The answer might lie in chemistry. The elements needed for life. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen were already present on Earth, but they were in simple forms. Somehow, they had to combine into more complex molecules to create the building blocks of life. Chapter 2 the building blocks of life, amino acids and proteins. So what exactly are these building blocks of life? In the simplest terms, life is made of molecules like amino acids, proteins and nucleic acids. Amino acids are small molecules that link together to form proteins which are essential for all living things. But how did amino acids form on a lifeless planet? One of the most famous experiments that tried to answer this question was conducted in 1953 by two scientists, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey. They wanted to see if they could recreate the conditions of early Earth in a laboratory. So they mixed water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, the gases they thought were present on early Earth, in a sealed container. Then, they used electrical sparks to simulate lightning. After a few days, Miller and Urey found something astonishing, their experiment had produced amino acids. This groundbreaking result showed that under the right conditions, simple molecules could indeed form the building blocks of life. But while amino acids are essential, they aren't life itself. They are like letters in an alphabet, and they still need to form words, sentences, and ultimately a story. So what came next? How did these basic molecules organize into the complex structures needed for living organisms? Chapter 3. Hydrothermal Vents life's possible birthplace deep underwater. Let's dive even deeper this time into the dark, mysterious depths of the ocean. Some scientists believe that life might have started around hydrothermal vents, which are cracks on the ocean floor that release superheated, mineral-rich water. Why hydrothermal vents? These vents provide a unique environment. They release chemicals like hydrogen sulfide, which can support chemical reactions that are essential for life. This chemical-rich, warm environment could have been the perfect incubator for early life. Imagine this, simple molecules floating around in these deep-sea environments start combining, creating new compounds. The heat and minerals provided by the vents might have given these molecules the energy to link up, forming more complex structures like RNA, proteins, and other cellular components. This idea is compelling because even today, we find unique life forms living around hydrothermal vents. These creatures don't rely on sunlight for energy, instead, they use chemicals from the vents, a process called chemosynthesis. Could the origins of life have followed a similar path? Chapter 4. The RNA World Hypothesis All right, now we've got some of the basic ingredients. But there's still a big question. How did life become self-replicating? For life to thrive and evolve, it needs a way to pass information and make copies of itself. This brings us to a fascinating theory known as the RNA world hypothesis. RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is a molecule similar to DNA, which stores genetic information in living cells. 
But unlike DNA, RN, it can also act as an enzyme, a molecule that speeds up chemical reactions. In other words, RNA can carry information and help build molecules. This dual role makes RNA incredibly special. Scientists propose that early life might have been based on RNA rather than DNA. Imagine simple RNA molecules forming in a warm, chemical-rich environment, like around hydrothermal vents or in shallow pools. Over time, these molecules could start copying themselves. This process of self-replication would be a crucial step toward life, allowing molecules to pass information from one generation to the next and evolve. As RNA molecules continue to replicate, they might have evolved and improved, eventually leading to more complex molecules and, later, DNA. In this way, the RNA world hypothesis suggests that life may have started with a single, self-replicating molecule, a fascinating idea that provides a potential bridge between chemistry and biology. Chapter 5. Panspermia. Could life have come from outer space? Now, here's a question that takes us beyond Earth itself. What if life didn't start on Earth at all? This idea is known as panspermia, which suggests that the building blocks of life or even life itself might have come from outer space. In recent years, scientists have discovered organic compounds, including amino acids, on meteorites that have landed on Earth. This discovery raises an intriguing possibility. Could these meteorites have seeded Earth with essential ingredients for life? Imagine a meteorite carrying amino acids or other organic compounds crashing into early Earth, depositing these molecules into the primordial soup or even into hydrothermal vents. This cosmic delivery might have jump-started the process of life on our planet. While panspermia doesn't explain how life originated in the first place, it does suggest that Earth's first life forms might have had help from space. It also raises exciting questions about the potential for life elsewhere in the universe. Chapter 6 assembling life, from protocells to the first cells. Now that we have some theories about how molecules formed, let's take it a step further. How did these molecules come together to create a living cell? One possible step in this journey was the formation of protocells, tiny structures that could hold molecules together and create a separate internal environment. Protocells likely had simple membranes which are layers that protect and separate the inside of a cell from the outside world. These membranes could have been formed from fatty molecules which naturally form bubbles in water. Inside these protocells, molecules could react and combine, shielded from the external environment. Over time, some protocells might have contained RNA or other self-replicating molecules, allowing them to grow, divide, and evolve. This development of protocells is a significant step because it could lead to true cells, the basic units of life. A cell has everything it needs to survive, grow, and reproduce. And from these first cells, life on Earth began to evolve and diversify into the vast array of organisms we see today. Chapter 7. Life Beyond Earth – What We're Learning From Other Planets Understanding how life began on Earth opens up another exciting question. Could life exist elsewhere in the universe? With each new discovery, scientists are uncovering clues that suggest life might not be unique to Earth. Mars, for example, may have had liquid water in the past, and researchers are still studying the red planet for signs of ancient life. Europa and Enceladus, moons of Jupiter and Saturn, have subsurface oceans under icy crusts, and scientists wonder if hydrothermal vents could exist there, similar to those on Earth. Beyond our solar system, we've also discovered exoplanets in the habitable zones of their stars, regions where conditions might allow liquid water. Could these distant worlds harbor life, too? NASA, ESA, and other space agencies are investing in missions and telescopes to search for signs of life. And who knows? In the coming years, we might find evidence of life elsewhere, adding even more layers to our understanding of how life begins and evolves. Reflections and final thoughts. So how did life begin? While we don't have all the answers, each theory, whether it's the primordial soup, deep sea vents, the RNA world, or even panspermia adds another piece to the puzzle. Each idea brings us closer to solving one of humanity's oldest mysteries. As we continue exploring Earth and the universe beyond, we'll likely uncover more clues, and who knows? We might even find life beyond our planet, reshaping our understanding of our place in the cosmos. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through time, space, and the origins of life. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more amazing explorations of the universe.